powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Jay Cohn. Janelle has the night off. A Busby man found guilty of first degree murder in the strangulation and burning death of Roy Lynn Wright's horse. That's right, it took a federal jury less than two hours to reach this guilty verdict against 20 year old DeMarzio Sanchez. That verdict delivered after days of testimony about the gruesome assault that left Roy Lynn Wright's horse dead. Q2's Asia Gore has been covering this case since its beginning. It was in court this afternoon when the verdict was pronounced. Asia? Jay, during closing arguments today, defense attorneys placed the blame on two others at the scene that fateful night, but jurors agreed with prosecutors that DeMarzio Sanchez was the ringleader. Jurors could have convicted Sanchez of second-degree murder, which does not require the intent to kill, but the jury determined Sanchez strangled and burned Royland Ride's horse knowing it would end her life. Each of the five people in the vehicle with the victim that night gave a different version of the story, making it difficult to sort out the facts. But we do know Ride's horse got into the vehicle with her three assailants at the Kirby Saloon, and later that night she suffered a brutal assault. Jurors believe it was Sanchez who doused the victim with gasoline and set her on fire. Defense attorneys pointed the finger at his co-defendants, Frank Sanchez and Angelica Whiteman, who have already admitted their roles in the murder. Today, after the jury delivered its guilty verdict, the victim's family hugged the lead investigator. The victim's sister tells me her death is a loss not only to her family and the Crow tribe, but those who never got the chance to meet Ride's horse. Roiland was sweet. Roiland was innocent. Roiland was a mother. Roiland was a daughter. She was a sister. And she was a caregiver. She loved everyone. She didn't have an enemy. She was the most beautiful person you could ever know. She had such natural beauty. And today we just rejoice with her. You know, she, we know that she's in the heavenly realms with our Father, and we rejoice with her that justice was served today. Sentencing is set for March. Sanchez faces life in prison. Jay. All right, thank you, Asia. Well, in other court news today, a Billings man made his initial court appearance accused of raping his teenage daughter's friend repeatedly. 39-year-old Eric Young charged in Yellowstone County Justice Court this afternoon with one count of sexual intercourse without consent. Officials at a Billings High School notified police that a 14-year-old student was involved in a romantic relationship with a much older man. The girl admitted she stayed with Young multiple times from August to October of this year and admitted to sexual contact. Young allegedly admitted he raped the victim around 10 times, but said he only had sex with the girl after she initiated the contact. Tonight, Young is being held at the Yellowstone County Jail without bond. One of two suspects who led police on a chase through two western Montana counties while firing a gun at pursuing officers now faces attempted murder charges. This chase began in Missoula late Wednesday morning when police there attempted a traffic stop. The suspects, though, fled north to St. Ignatius, where one of the suspects fired shots at law enforcement. 34-year-old Alta Little Light, three fingers of Crow Agency, the driver of the car, is now facing charges of criminal endangerment and assault with a weapon. The passenger, 27-year-old Rochelle St. Denis of Missoula, is charged with attempted deliberate homicide in addition to assault with a weapon. Fortunately, no one was injured in the shootout, which eventually ended with both women surrendering. St. Dennis and Little Light Three Fingers now held in the Lake County Jail as the investigation continues. The car involved in the pursuit was reportedly stolen here in Billings back on the 14th of November. Billings shoppers will have one less sports outlet this holiday season. As we told you last night, the owners of Big Bear Sports say the cleanup from an armed standoff that took place in their King Avenue store last month will simply take longer than they had hoped. Today we're able to take a look inside the store, but we were only allowed to take footage of the front entryway. Co-owner Brett Taylor says his staff just finished taking a full inventory, which took nearly a week. Despite making steady progress on the repairs, Taylor says there's still a lot to be done, and even though the incident means missing out on the busiest time of the year, he remains positive. Big hit to us. Um, I mean, it's it's our busiest time of the year, as I'm, I'm sure it is for a lot of businesses, uh, the holiday season. Um, but the, the biggest thing is we're trying not to focus on that. We're trying to pull all of our focus into the future. Taylor says one of the most difficult parts of the process has been uh, figuring out exactly what was damaged and to what extent. 
Taylor pledged to provide updates on the store's Facebook page about the store's reopening. Seventy-six years ago today, the U.S. Naval Fleet came under attack at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. At the Yellowstone National Cemetery in Laurel today, friends, family and veterans gathered to remember the thousands lost that day and the thousands more lost over the course of World War II. The names of those World War II veterans, both men and women, buried at the National Cemetery were read as part of today's ceremony. In honor of National Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day, flags here in Montana flying at half staff today in honor of the men and women who lost their lives on this day 76 years ago. The rock band Foo Fighters will be performing in concert at Metro Park on Saturday. For the group to play here in Billings, the band's promoter asked that security be upgraded. Q2's David Jay joins us here in studio tonight with more on that story. David. Well, Jay, uh, Metro Park Security has uh, used wands to scan people at events, but now we'll use walk-through scanners in the lobby before fans enter the Rimrock Auto Arena. The Foo Fighters will arrive Saturday with 17 semis and 15 buses. Metro Park General Manager Bill Dutcher says no scanners were available to rent or borrow, so Yellowstone County Commissioners quickly approved spending $50,000 for the 12 devices. Dutcher says without the machines, the Foo Fighters would not be playing in Billings. It's a big show and they uh, obviously aren't taking it lightly. We feel, as the commissioners did, it was a very good investment. It's not the last time that that will be required in this stage of security uh, nationwide with different things going on. And now Yellowstone County, Rimrock Auto Arena, we own those at Metro Park. Cameras, recording devices, weapons, bottles, containers, uh, projectiles, and laser pointers will also not be allowed at the concert. And parking will be changed. Uh, Dutcher says it'll be the same as what was used for the Garth Brooks concerts. The Foo Fighters had one date available, and for Metro Park management to make it happen, it moved the last day of the All-American Indian Shootout to Rocky on Saturday. Jay? All right, thank you, David. Well, still to come on tonight's 530 News, a new month means new schools hoping to earn your vote in our One School at a Time grant competition. We'll tell you about all three. And later in sports, call it March Madness in December for these Native American teams. Scott tells us why coming up. And coming up in weather, hey, take a look at this. We warmed all the way up to 49 degrees today, and that is just the beginning of an expanded warming trend. How hot will it get and how long will it last? We'll tell you all about it in a few more minutes. You're watching MTN News with Jay Cohn and Janelle Slade. Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire and Sports with Scott Green.